penis equals man. Okay, boomer. <laughs> Set self-awareness to zero. Anything to shock and challenge the squares who brought you up. It's why nobody gets a nose ring at 56. Oh, wow. <laughs> He just did an okay boomer joke and then dropped something like this. <laughs> yes, people are identifying as trans to be able to piss their parents off. Yeah. And and then when they get kicked out of their homes and their families, they really they they really let them have it all right. That's that's one hell of a rebellion. It's one one hell of a thing that, you know? I guess I could talk about this asshole. Because, as we're talking about the sex abuse scandals covered up by the church, Bill Maher decided he wants to target the LGBTQ plus community. And don't get me wrong, I despise, absolutely despise, and call out on a regular basis, rainbow washing. That is, corporations that spend all year doing really fucked up shit towards LGBTQ plus people, such as Disney, for example, supporting a whole bunch of politicians that ended up enacting the Don't Say Gay bill, and then flipping the script and saying, well, by the way, we're now going to be very uh, pro-LGBTQ, we're going to have prominent LGBTQ plus creators and storylines, we're not just going to have side characters that can get edited out easily for the Chinese market, we're going to be at the forefront of this, and we're going to make sure that everyone knows that we care about you, we respect you, and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, Bill Maher decided to chime in. And finally, new rule, if something about the human race is changing at a pretty unprecedented rate, we have to at least discuss it. Broken down over time, the LGBT population of America seems to be roughly doubling every generation. According to a recent Gallup poll, less than... Based. 1% of Americans born before 1946, that's Joe Biden's generation, identify that way. 2.6% of boomers do, 4.2% of Gen X, 10.5% of millennials, and 20.8% of Gen Z. Which means if we follow this trajectory, we will all be gay in 2054. Based. He's on to us, everybody. I don't see a problem, even if he is right. So, this is something that conservatives have been fear-mongering for a while, that, uh... At the end of the day, it's a choice. It's a choice to be gay. It's a choice to be trans. It's a choice to be a. Uh, it's a choice to be intersex. Uh, and uh, the reason that I want to push back against the ability to, say, uh, teach children about the fact that there are some families that have two mummies and those families are perfectly healthy. Uh, as long as there is love involved, that is the most important thing. If the kids are loved, it doesn't matter if the, the mom and the dad are in the picture, if the dad and the dad are in the picture, if the mom and the mom are in the picture, or if neither are in the picture and just happens to be a pair of non-binary individuals who happen to love their child, then guess what? It works out. The child seems to do all right. Um, but what has definitely changed over the course of, say, 1940, when I believe was sodomy still illegal back then, all the way up to the future 100% gay communist luxury uh, space queer, uh, you know, dream that we all have, um, is that there's a lot more acceptance, broadly speaking, in certain countries and societies, um, especially when it comes to uh, groups that had previously uh, felt that uh, it could endanger them to come forward and talk about these kind of things. There's also a lot more understanding of a lot more complex subjects today than there ever was before. Do you think in 1960, uh, the average person, a normie, if you will, knew what someone who is intersex was, knew what someone who is asexual was, knew what someone who is aromantic was, knew what a non-binary person was. Like, holy fuck, I can go to 2000, and that's probably still the case, that most of those topics would be woefully understood. We, we can go all the way up to, like, 2017, and people are still like, wait, I, I, okay, I'm, I, I'm with you, I'm with you that trans people exist, I understand that, okay, I've... I, I've I've seen I've seen that, but what you're trying to non-binary? So wait, is it? I don't fully. So what does that mean? Is this about the penis? It's not about the penis. How does the penis play into this? What role does the penis have? It doesn't have a role when it comes to gender. The, how does that doesn't make any sense? Boys have the penis. I don't know how. Wait, what? So so you, so you can have a penis and you're not a man. You can be a woman with a penis, okay? But then how do you have a penis, but then you're not either gender? Gender fluid? 
Wait, does that mean your gender changes? How does that make sense? Wait, they them? They, I, have, I, I refer to them as they them? Do they have a penis? The answer is maybe? Really? Oh god. I, I, I don't understand this. I'm sorry, it's, it's weird and scary to me, and I refuse to acknowledge it. But that's, that's what I would expect to see is the best, uh, yeah, sodomy was legal in 1940. Oh, okay. So, why is the silent generation not identifying openly as gay? I wonder why. <laughs> why don't they risk imprisonment? Why don't they risk imprisonment just to help with the stats? But I would assume that is why a lot more people today than ever before uh, are identifying uh, as LGBTQ+, plus, uh, because there's a lot more understanding of it, there's a lot more acceptance of it, uh, you know, in, in certain cases, um, and uh, pe people, people feel more confident coming forward. Does that mean that there is some form of ideology that is turning kids gay? Uh, the answer to that is always going to be no. No. Conversion therapy does not work. I mean, again, try to just use the, the, the uh, debate bro logic here. Uh, if people's lives became exceptionally more difficult as a result of being gay, uh, they uh, can get way more violence happening towards them, broadly speaking, in society, uh, they can be disowned from their family, they can kick, be kicked out of their homes, uh, you know, they can have trouble getting work and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if that is the case, then why, if they could just switch, uh, would they not choose an easier life? Uh, like, it's broken my heart to listen to how many, uh, you know, friends who are now fully out said when they were younger, I, I wish so much that I wasn't gay, like, you know, because you grow up in a, a situation in which you don't feel safe. Um, and that's that's heartbreaking um, to say or think. And then who's going to buy this chair? <laughs> you missed the second part. The sodomy was legal until in, illegal in Texas until 2003. Wow. Texas. The fuck? And was it all sodomy? Or, or was it just sodomy between a man and a man? Or, or, or was all, all forms of sodomy de-permitted? I'm just saying that when things change this much, this fast, people are allowed to ask, what's up with that? All the babies are in the wrong bodies? Was there a mix-up at the plant? Like with Captain Crunch's Oops All Berries? How did that kill... <laughs> this is such a bad joke. It wasn't that long ago when adults asked a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? They meant what profession? <laughs> Boo. Boo. Again, it's not a choice, all right? It, it, you don't choose to be gay. You don't choose to be trans. Uh, it's like, there, there's... There's something to be said about people trying to explore these things for themselves and not fully understanding them. I mean, if you, I mean, you probably won't be able to, but if you read the book Gender Queer, it, it is about one person's journey and it takes them their entire, uh, you know, adult life to figure out that they are uh, both uh, trans uh, and in, uh, asexual and aromantic. So if someone is exploring these kind of feelings, if someone is like at one point in their life, like, you know what, uh, I think I'm non-binary. And later they're like, no, I think I happen to be uh, a trans woman. Like that's 100% perfectly valid. That's their own uh, journey. Uh, no one else is going to be able to choose it for them. Uh, no one else is going, and there's no such thing as if they learn about that these concepts exist, suddenly it's going to increase people's desires. Like the same thing used to be done towards gay people. And I mean, it still is, I shouldn't say things have changed completely in there, but there used to be this concept that being gay is a choice and people are choosing this sinful uh you know lifestyle of uh, sodomy and dancing and orgies and all this kind of stuff and so we need to be able to convert children and that's where conversion therapy comes from uh for both children and adults the fact that hey um if you just do the right amount of you know konami code for homophobia uh we can figure out how to de-gay you so uh, show up here, you're going to uh, have some lessons where you'll read the Bible constantly, uh, you'll talk about uh, God's love, you'll talk about having uh, Jesus inside you, the love of Jesus being inside you, how good it feels to have the warm embrace of God inside you as well, uh, and that will definitely, hopefully, prevent you from ever uh, wanting to do what you want to do. Uh, just, just keep trying it. In the wake of America about to lose abortion rights, the ACLU recently tweeted a list of those who would be disproportionately harmed by this. You would think women might top that list. 
No, wasn't even on the list. Second on the list was LGBT. Really? Abortion rights affects gay and trans people more than, you know, breeders? <laughs> I'm happy for LGBT folks that we... I, I don't think you know what these words mean. I, I think when you hear, like, LGBT in, in your head, it's just kind of like, gay. Maybe? I don't have any other way to explain this. We now live in an age where they can live their authentic lives openly. And we should always be mindful of respecting and protecting. But someone needs to say it. Not everything's about you. <laughs> and it's okay to ask questions about something that's very new and involves children. The answer can't always be that anyone from a marginalized community is automatically right, trump card, mic drop, end of discussion. Because But that's not the case. It's not just trans people being like, hey, by the way, uh, we're here to tell you about these issues and how they work, and uh, please listen to us, and we're the authorities on this. Broadly speaking, they've had to push back against people not understanding these topics as cis people have been catching up until finally there's a broad consensus amongst the scientific community where they're like, yeah, we've actually, the more we research this, it's actually entirely 100% true. They're, they're right. So, uh, yeah, this is basically how we should probably uh, position ourselves in order to help people uh, from a scientific standpoint, from a medical standpoint. We're literally experimenting on children. Maybe that's why Sweden and Finland have stopped giving puberty blockers to kids. Because we just- What? I didn't hear about this. Finland, Sweden, massive boo. Don't know much about the long-term effects. Although common sense should tell you that when you reverse the course of raging hormones, there's going to be problems. We do know it hinders the development of bone density, which is kind of important if you like having a skeleton. Fuck me, this one's hardcore. This is like a little closer to Crowder level tier, where he's going to be doing these kind of fear-mongering tactics. <laughs> like, can we just get this out of the way? Puberty blockers have been used on kids for like, I think close to 50 years or something like that, and it's been used on cis children as well. Uh, they're very well studied, they're well understood. The idea of suddenly this is something that, uh, I don't know, this is the first time I think you've ever had any concern about it, because again, it's related to something where you can try and vilify trans people. Um, like, rather than t uh, trust talking mouthpieces on the internet or on the HBO, uh, look towards the research on this topic. Because it seems time and time again, studies have shown that, yes, it is reversible, it is safe, it uh, greatly helps uh, alleviate gender dysphoria, which in turn helps reduce the amount of suicidal ideation that children will feel and experience under the dysphoria. So, yeah, it helps prevent children from killing themselves. <laughs> Fertility and the ability to have an orgasm seem also to be affected. This isn't just a lifestyle decision. It's medical. Weighing trade-offs. Yeah. That's why it's done with a doctor. That's why, that's why it's done with a family doctor. It's usually with children who have the privilege of being able to have access to all of this as well. Is not bigotry. Did I hear what happened with John Mulaney? I did. I made a uh, post about it on Twitter, and a lot of people got really upset in that post and were telling me, Lance, how could you say this? Don't, don't you know that he just came out of rehab? And then I was like, what, what does that have to do with, with what happened? Either way, if you didn't hear, John Mulaney, who I had always thought, because I, I like John Mulaney. I, I've enjoyed uh, a lot of the roles he played, uh, except for that new Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers film. God. I just infuriates me. Um, but anyways, I've, I, for the most part, like John Mulaney. John Mulaney brought Dave Chappelle uh, as a guest to one of his big sold-out shows, massive show. It's another one of those shows where they make you put your phone inside of the pocket so that you can't film it, uh, so they can maintain the copyright, I suppose, on the, the routine or whatever it is. So there's no video footage of it, but apparently Dave Chappelle went on a tirade of the highest order. Uh, yeah, Tim, Tim Heidecker's response was pretty fucking based. Um, here, I can read you some of the, the jokes. And by the way, uh, just because I will make a post, and I think I posted something like, John Mulaney, uh, listen to your feedback, so now he's going on tour uh, to tone the rhetoric down with uh, Steven Crowder. You know, pretty pretty low-tier uh, joke itself. And people who get really mad at that, like, you, 
you can criticize shit you don't like. That's different than me saying, I don't think John Mulaney should ever work again because he let that happen and then hugged him and then was laughing alongside him when Dave Chappelle was making all these terrible jokes, right? Um, like, if you get criticism in the opposite direction, that's, that's like, that's the same people who will be like, well, you're cancel culture. You, you want to cancel? It's like, no, but you're not, like, free from criticism either. All right, here we go. Content warning, uh, transphobia. So Chappelle got out and said, Okay, so I went to see John Mulaney at the Red Rocks. There was a surprise opener. It was Dave fucking Chappelle. The second he came on stage, I was scared. By the time he was done, I thought I was going to throw up. My sister actually left and had a breakdown. I don't have a video of the phone locks, but here's the exact transcript as I can manage. Uh, warning. I sometimes wonder if Bill Maher is running a Dennis Miller arc. <laughs> Thanks, Big Room. Uh, thank you for giving Anarcho Communist a tier one. Dennis Miller, in my opinion, didn't really start out super great, though. He always he was always kind of a hack. The people who got upset by it, I guess they didn't listen all the way because until the end, because I didn't have a problem with trans people, I really didn't. But I do now. Cue uproarious laughter. And there was such a backlash. I mean, an uproar. And now I can't tell jokes about transgender people ever again. And I won't. On TV. If I were to tell my producers, hey, I identify as Chinese, and then I came in, offensive uh, Chinese impression with Ching Chong, and the one Chinese guy there was like, this isn't right. Or what if I went to prison, and I'd say, no man, I'm a woman, I identify as a woman, I'm going to a woman's prison, and guess the first thing I'd do when I got there. Yeah, you B-words better do my laundry, or I'm gonna... He then points to a disabled girl in the front row. So does that dog actually help you with anything or just keep you company? Do you think if you put a little peanut butter down there, he'd... Yeah, I bet he would. He'd help you out. You ever put a little peanut butter down there? You ever done that? Can he pick stuff up? Like, can he pick up beer bottles? He can. I'll give you $700 for that dog right now. Later to two girls in the audience. Hey, you girls, boys, does it even matter anymore? This transcript does not include jokes comparing Ukraine to Vietnam, jokes about Russia's ineffectiveness, like he wants them to succeed, or John Mulaney's post that comments about Dave being one of his best friends. I was forced to see Dave Chappelle, his jokes included comparing transgender people to racists and rapists. He also encouraged a disabled person in the audience to force her service dog to perform oral sex on her. Please reblog this if you can, for evidence of his continued transphobia. Uh, I'd really hate uh, my Chappelle nightmare to be nothing. So, that's supposed to be a cue of some of the things that were being said at that uh, uh, show. Uh, and, yeah, Tim Heidecker uh, tweeted out, like, uh, there will be no transphobic weirdo openers for my tour, or I guarantee, or whatever, which was pretty nice. Um, y like, people were pushing back on me because they're like, you know, John Mulaney uh, isn't to blame, it's Dave Chappelle. And it's like, fair enough. A, you have to know what Dave Chappelle is going to talk about. Uh, Dave Chappelle seems to think that his uh, trans jokes and sets are just crushing it right now uh, and it seems to be one of the things that he's making uh, a regular theme on his shows because he uh, gets some backlash and criticism against it um, so yeah you'd have to understand that's going to be doing uh, that's going to be a thing that happens and then on top of that if you give him a hug after his set and he said all that kind of stuff telling you telling him that you love him like it's different than Patton Oswalt Patton Oswalt, also friends with Dave Chappelle. I couldn't imagine being a comic of those sizes uh, and knowing Dave Chappelle, who, again, is a legend in his own right. It's one of the saddest arcs to see him this way, especially because he is, like, one of my greatest inspirations. But, like, to for Patton Oswalt, he made a statement, and he, and he posted it, and he's like, I understand that a lot of people uh, are upset that I'm friends with Dave Chappelle. Our friendship uh, transcends my uh, disgust at his transphobia right now. And um, I, I do not endorse or condone what he says about trans people, but at the same time, uh, I'm not going to refuse to stop, uh, you know, calling him my friend. That's very different than, you know what, I'm also going to go on tour, have him open the set, have him do a whole bunch of super hardcore transphobic jokes, uh, and then afterwards be like, yay, hug, we're all good, you know, kind of stuff. Um, I mean, in, in a handful of ways, uh, you're, you're definitely endorsing uh, that it's okay to do what Dave Chappelle is doing. And to the other pushback where people are like, what, you, you can't make jokes about trans people? Every other group you're allowed to make jokes? Like, Dave Chappelle makes jokes about everybody. Uh, is, is it not fair for him to make jokes? I mean, the same argument could be made about white comics back in the day, uh, you know, prior to the civil rights movement even itself, uh, who were doing uh, incredibly racist uh, jokes about black people. Um, and if they threw in a couple jokes about white people... Uh, in the middle of that, it's not as if it's an equal thing. Uh, you're, you're not suddenly punching up versus punching down uh, in equal measure there. If you're going to make jokes about trans people, 
I mean, Jesse Genders did a great uh, rundown and explanation about, no, it, 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 there's no situation in which you simply cannot make jokes about any one group, but what are the jokes in service of? And if the jokes are in service of further marginalizing that group, of further vilifying that group, of making that group continue uh, to, uh, you know, feel unsafe, then you are 100% punching down. Uh, you're, you're punching down and you're furthering to marginalize them is pretty much it. And she does a really good job of explaining, she breaks down the differences between how some of his jokes, even though they're jokes directed to trans people, are helpful. They they are jokes, they are jokes uh, at the expense of trans people, but at the same time, the purpose of the joke actually goes towards fighting against uh, stereotypes and fighting against people's preconceived notions about trans people. And in the long run, a joke like that, and this specific example, can actually help uh, rather than hurt and harm the trans community, whereas the joke here, like the one uh, in his office for the punchline, is just that a trans woman pulled her dick out and threw it on the table, uh, and that's that's like that's the end all. That's that's the like dot, you know. Then it doesn't really serve uh, anything other than just furthering people's uh, you know preconceived notions about trans people. Yet when a book questioning the sudden uptick in transitioning children. Oh wow, you're promoting this. This is, it's been like thoroughly debunked as like transphobic nonsense. Abigail Schreier, fuck me. Bill. ...was released. A trans lawyer with the ACLU named Chase Strangio tweeted, Stopping the circulation of this book and these ideas is 100% a hill I will die on. How very civil liberties of him. Chase, by the way, has just been named one of the grand marshals of this year's New York City Pride March along with three other trans people and a lesbian. Huh, what's missing here? Oh, right, a gay man. <laughs> That's where we are now. Gay men aren't hip enough for the gay pride parade. Wow. Wow. Holy fuck. Compared to trans, gay is practically cis, and cis is practically Mormon. This is really hardcore. This is like that little viral clip that went on um, Twitter. I didn't know it was anywhere near as bad as this whole segment is. This is really, really intense. And this is a phenomenon we need to take into account when we look at this issue. Yes, part of the rise in LGBT numbers is from people feeling free enough to tell it to a pollster, and that's all to the good. But some of it is, it's trendy. But, of course, there's a but. <laughs> I'm going to acknowledge the reality of the situation. But there are trending, like people who do it just because it's popular. They, they want to fit in, you know? We got to acknowledge that. Come on. We, we, we have to invalidate their humanity. We have to invalidate their identity because uh, they could just be doing it for a popularity contest. A popularity contest, by the way, Bill, how does it make their lives fucking easier? How, how does it make their lives easier, broadly speaking, in society, when motherfuckers like you are going to do segments like this? How does, like, a young non-binary kid watching TV, all of a sudden this comes on, feel suddenly safer in the world? Penis equals man? Okay, boomer. <laughs> Set self-awareness to zero. Remember, the prime directive... Oh, of course Adam Carolla's there. That's where half the laughter is coming from. It's, it's basically like a couple people in the audience and then just Adam Carolla makes up about like 15 of the voices. <laughs> of every teen is anything to shock and challenge the squares who brought you up. It's why nobody gets a nose ring at 56. Oh, wow. <laughs> he just did an okay boomer joke and then dropped something like this. <laughs> yes, people are identifying as trans to be able to piss their parents off. Yeah. And, and then when they get kicked out of their homes and their families, they really, they, they really let them have it all right. That's, that's one hell of a rebellion. It's one, one hell of a thing that, you know? <clears throat> I got a nose ring at 40. I know lots of people who have nose rings later in life. I always knew Bill was an asshole after his movie came out because I was actually kind of excited. I was going through that atheist phase at the time. And then it's like, oh, he's made a whole movie about making fun of religious people. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see it. And, and then it was him making you gay bro jokes. Like, come on, bro, you gay. Yeah, you, you're pretty gay. 
Yeah, you're you're probably pretty gay, bro, and that's funny. And if you haven't noticed that with kids doing something for the likes is more important than their own genitals, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Dr. Erica Anderson is a prominent 71-year-old clinical psychologist who is herself transgender and who now says, I think it's gone too far. The L.A. Times summarizes, she's come to believe that some children identifying as trans are falling under the influence of their peers and social media. If you attend a small dinner party of typically very liberal upper-income Angelinos, it is not uncommon to hear parents who each have a trans kid having a conversation about that. What are the odds of that happening in Youngstown, Ohio? Why is that a problem? What, what's wrong about that? What, why is that something worth being like, we have to bring this up, okay? I'm a liberal, and in liberal circles, it seems people are comfortable admitting that they have trans children. Like, what the fuck? If this spike in trans children is all natural, why is it regional? It you just said it, not, not like two or three fucking paragraphs ago. We just talked about that. The very draconian laws. It, it varies state by state. In some states, they're actually trying to legislate trans kids out of existence. That, that, that would have a profound effect. Yes, a very profound effect on the percentage of people who feel comfortable talking about this at all. Either Ohio is shaming them or California is creating them. It's, it's like that day we suddenly all needed bottled water all the time. <laughs> if we can't admit that in certain enclaves there is some level of trendiness to the idea of being anything other than straight... He thinks he's being edgy, by the way. He's like... 2005, I want to say, in terms of like the anti SJW bigots on YouTube who were talking about this. Like, you're, you're, like, no bullshit is more ahead of the curve than fucking Bill Maher on this one. Like, I, I don't know if everyone heard about like trans trending or trans trenders that used to be a very uh, common term that was used to vilify trans people, saying that they are, like, they are choosing to be trans exclusively because they want attention in society. It's like, this is a prehistoric talking point. Great. Then this is not a serious science-based discussion. It's a blow being struck in the culture wars using children as cannon fodder. I don't understand parents who won't let their nine-year-old walk to the corner without a helmet, an EpiPen, and a GPS tracker. <laughs> and God for... Why do you care? That's the weird thing. Why, why are you like, I, I need to be able to call this out. Uh, parents who are looking after their children. Uh, yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Bid their lips touch dairy. But... <laughs> yeah, no more EpiPens. <laughs> like fucking, what's, what's the logical conclusion of all this? <laughs> It's like, oh, what, are you about to have a epileptic shock? <laughs> Fucking soy boy. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Real men do not use EpiPens, okay? Real men, they fight through it. But hormone blockers and genital surgery, fine. <laughs> genital surgery is not performed on children. Stop regurgitating this talking point. Talk about a nut allergy. <laughs> Yes, it is circumcision. True. True. Oh, yeah, that's totally fine. I, uh, I guess penises are gross now, but <laughs> one might come in handy later on. That's so fucked up. That's not funny in the slightest. Jesus. Like, so what, you think kids are all uh, having their penises cut off at a very young age, like entirely, and then they're turned into vaginas, and then this is like the massive a phenomenon, and then later on in life, there's just going to be hundreds of thousands of people who are like, I really wish I didn't play into that uh, trend back in the day. It really, really cost me something. And if you're a man who wants to experience life without a pair of balls, you do not have to get surgery. You can get married. <laughs> I can. Oh, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife hates me. <laughs> God, I have a bad marriage. <laughs> oh, I cry myself to sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, my wife, huh? <laughs> and never forget, children are impressionable and very, very stupid. 
kids don't know why mom drinks every day or why dad has two cell phones. I feel like there's a lot of self-reporting going on here, Bill. Maybe the boy who thinks he's a girl is just gay. Or what? But fuck you. Who are you to say? Honestly, if you are none of these things, if you are a straight, cis, heterosexual man, then why the fuck do you care? Why are you implying these kind of things? That's really fucked up. Whatever Fraser was. <laughs> Maybe the girl. So, by the way, if this is like, you know, mainstream liberal uh, liberalism coming out as well, uh, and I know a lot of people like to be like, well, Bill Maher is just conservative, right? But you have to understand, I think some people sometimes, and this goes back to the Dave Chappelle incident that just happened with John Mulaney. I think it's less that John Mulaney actively wants to, uh, you know, maybe an active, full, raging transphobe himself. And people don't recognize how normalized transphobia is in society where someone like John Mulaney may not have any trans jokes in his repertoire, but thinks it's completely fine for Dave Chappelle to get out there and say the things that he's saying. And then afterwards, when the backlash happens, it's like, oh, I I didn't know that was all that bad. Is, are, are those really, okay, I guess. Uh, hmm. Girl who hates girly stuff just needs to learn that being female doesn't mean you have to act like a Kardashian. Hell yeah. Yeah. Maybe childhood makes you sad sometimes, and there are other solutions besides hand me the dick saw. This is like a Steven Crowder bit. Uh, uh, you know, just as unfunny, but 100% Steven Crowder style. <laughs> oh, they cut off their dicks. The majority of parents do not take this lightly. And that is very hard to know when something is real or just a phase. But how fucking terrible is it to have people like you on TV, on mainstream television? You've got the parents sitting at home and they're probably just as scared and confused. And they don't understand why exactly is, uh, you know, my son saying that uh, uh, she's a she. Why I don't understand this. This is weird. Oh, and then I've got Bill Maher on there and it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Huh. Maybe this is all a fad. Yeah, uh, he is going through a, a phase right now. It's all a fad, and then I'm going to have to tell him, yeah, son, uh, this is not true. It's in your head. Yeah, social media has corrupted you. I, I watched that, that friendly talking liberal on the, uh, the television yesterday, so uh, that's what we're going to have to do here. And I understand being trans is different. It's innate. But kids do also have phases. They're kids. It's all phases. The dinosaur phase. The Hello Kitty phase. One day they want to be an astronaut. The next day you can't get them to leave their... Do you remember when the most prominent trans conservative public figure, Blair White, was asked, when did you know you were trans by Joe Rogan? And her response was, when I was five years old. Why is it that, uh, and I know Bill is uh, apparently a, a man of science and data, right? Why is it that if we look at the actual data, the meta studies on this, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the amount of people who identified as trans when they were younger did not detransition later in life or did not realize it was a mistake later in life. And if that's true, because if you you want to, like, being cis myself, I have to uh, refer, or I, I guess in this case, defer to studies, because I'm, I'm not going to be able to understand this from a lived experience perspective, then to push back in this regard is to deny not only the broad consensus of the scientific community, the studies and the data on this, but it's just to push this narrative. It's to keep pushing a narrative that trans people, uh, trans kids specifically, maybe it's a phase, maybe it's a fad. Should we not explore this? Should we not? Ex can we not talk about this? Why is it suddenly transphobic for me to even bring up this topic? Why is it transphobic for me to even talk about these kind of things? I mean, come on. I'm not going to do any research or studies into a very serious topic that has very sensitive issues surrounding it, including suicidal ideation of children. But I am going to do a couple jokes at their expense and talk about how they all cut their dicks off with saws. That seems like, you know, that seems like a good, uh, good course of action here. Fuck Bill Maher. And again, it just, this, this stuff shows you how pervasive this is, broadly speaking. I was saying the same thing about indigenous racism. People often think like, holy fuck, I can't believe that Disney uh, would have these like songs where they talk about scalping uh, the Indians and, and, and all this other kind of stuff. And then you're like, I, I do. 
makes perfect sense to me. You know, it's so normalized in society. People fucking will fight tooth and nail to have some of the most racist mascots on on their clothing and branding for fucking massive NFL teams. That they, they they will f- fight to they say this is about our heritage and our culture. <laughs> it's like if you had the black faces, if your team name was the black faces, did, would you be defending that? Would you be like, oh yeah, we should we should keep this team? I mean, uh, it's, it's our it's our heritage. It's our culture. We can't we can't change anything broadly speaking in society if it's also something that happened before uh, at the end of the day do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs many are saying this well we've got the solution for you it's the surf times in podcast form available on most major podcasting networks now if you enjoy it please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out apparently and it's free just like the podcast to our gods xander corvus and peyton l just we are prepared to embark on a mighty jihad in your name. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble jesters, attempting in vain to get you to laugh. To our valiant knights of the round table, Benji Arnie, Tech Tink, Scary Urkulin, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, it doesn't matter what I believe. It only matters what I can prove. Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariane McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multimondi, Trevbot, EXE, Brian Ephraim, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our mugs and salute our brave heroes off to another glorious conquest.